Hi, and welcome to Talking About Success. I'm your host, Jack Canfield, America's number one success coach, founder of the Canfield Training Group, and author of numerous best selling books, including the Chicken Soup for the Soul series and the Success Principles How to Get from Where You Are to Where You Want to Be. I have a wonderful guest today, Denisa Pelachova. She's come all the way from Czechoslovakia, the Czech Republic, to be with us today. Really excited about having her as a guest. She's an amazing woman who is a successful entrepreneur, but more importantly, she's a, a mother and a wife and an expert on love and intimacy, which I'm sure she has practiced in her own family, teaching <laughs> it to people all over the world. And she's an example of really how to have it all in your life. And I want you to take away that today, that you literally can have a life that's fulfilled in every area of your life. Um, she has a happy family, nourishing relationship, and a rich career in which she's living her soul's purpose. So welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Hi. Really appreciate it. So let's start by just telling me, you know, a little bit about who you are and what you do. Okay. Uh, well, in my work, uh, I teach about intimacy and love. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, I would say that I'm helping people to find more the feeling of how it is to be themselves, mm -hmm. which is the basis of being in a relationship and having a happy family. And I've been on this path since 2002, so I started, you know, pretty young. <laughs> and since I was a teenager, I remember that I always wanted to help people. But for a few years, I didn't know how. I was studying sociology and I was sort of preparing for being the market researcher or to work in politics. And I didn't feel happy looking at this, you know, possible career of mine. And in that time, I was uh, looking for something that would make more meaning in my life. And in that time, I found some workshops where I would learn about my body and feelings. And also, I joined a Buddhist group and at a Buddhist center, which was the beginning of how my path started to unfold. And later on, I was asked by some of my friends to give a workshop on intimacy and relating and that's how it started mm -hmm. now you teach about restoring and enhancing love and intimacy in relationships mm -hmm. and tell talk, talk a little about that well what i would like to say first that today we are in a time where so many people divorce or break apart the statistics for both europe and americas are about 50% divorce rate. In my country is 50% in three to five years after marriage, mm. which is the time to have one or two children. And in fact, those you know breakups rates are even much higher, which means that we are a society which doesn't know how to live together for a long time. And at the same time, what I do believe and what I can see from my practice in my estimation, about 80% of the relationships which are breaking up, they could be happy together. It doesn't mean that they made a mistake when choosing their partner. They could have a happy relationship and marriage and family. They just didn't learn how. And that's the point, because we are not taught how to create and maintain a long lasting relationship where there is love and passion and respect. And for most of us, our parents, they were not very good role models. <laughs> we didn't learn at school how to you know, be intimate with someone, how to communicate in a relationship, how to create and maintain a nourishing sex life as well. And those are things to be learned. And so this is my passion to bring over what you can do, what any one of us can do to have a long lasting, happy relationship. So share with our viewers some of those things. What is, what is it that you teach exactly? Mm -hmm. What would I learn if I came to your workshop with my wife? Mm -hmm. Well, one of my workshops is the couples workshop. Mm -hmm. It's a weekend. And this weekend for many couples has been really transformative. Like we had, well, through the years, it was thousands of couples. And many of them, they would come, you know, to improve the relationship. They felt happy and in love and they just wanted to make it even better. 
And on the other end, we had couples who were really struggling, who were about to divorce. I remember uh, one couple later, they explained their story and the woman, she was really desperate. She was like, oh no, I can't stand this any longer and we just have to divorce. And her husband told me, and this was after the workshop, he said, well, my wife, she came and she had two papers and she said, this is, these are the divorce papers and this is the application. <laughs> and he said, <laughs> so I looked at it and the workshop was cheaper. <laughs> so <laughs> he was right. And so they came and this is a story which is five years old now and they are still together. Mm -hmm. And what I want to say that this weekend for so many has really been a, a deep change in how they see each other. And what happens for many couples that over time there is more and more distance created from something we just don't express and we just swallow, we don't communicate about our needs, our feelings and some things may happen which are painful and so this is one of the reasons why we may grow apart. And after a few years of swallowing and, you know, not expressing and just enduring something, we think, oh, now I don't feel anything anymore. It's done. <laughs> but it's not. Usually it just means that there is pain accumulated, which again can be resolved. You know, you, we, can, we can work with it. We can reconnect in a very profound way. And so this is what happens during the weekend, <laughs> mm. that we have helped people to open up again, to go through the possible pain and conflict, which has been there for a long time sometimes, and to find new ways how to create a bond which is deep and nourishing and loving. And practically we go through, you know, teaching about emotions. And usually we have different strategies how to deal with emotions. Mostly women like to talk about it and share it, even though when they are angry or frustrated, they would come to their partner to, you know, resolve it and just say what they don't like, <laughs> which may feel very painful for the men. And uh, we just want to be in contact, in touch. Whereas for most men, they just want to be alone when they feel angry or frustrated. So they would go to their room or a garage or a walk. And if we don't know about those different strategies we may have in a couple, it can create a lot of pain. Like the woman, for example, she would come after her man and say, well, you are angry. And he says, I'm not. <laughs> and she oh, I can feel it, you are, let's talk about it. So basically she's offering what she would love to get herself. And on the other hand, when she's angry and he's like, okay, so I'll give you your space. Well, usually the woman gets even more angry and more frustrated. So this is one of the topics which oftentimes there is so much misunderstanding. And what I would like to uh, stress that a woman who doesn't really express what she feels, sh this will also shut down her sexually. So there is no way how to create a meaningful intimacy when we are swallowing our feelings, when we are not expressing, you know, the sadness or the pain or the frustration we may go through at times. And this is an important topic because people think about sex as something, you know, like it's a thing. <laughs> and if we have the right techniques, <laughs> we'll be fine. But this is not the case because our sexuality is part of our lives. And we need to look at more, you know, more parts of the relationship in order to have a sex life, which we desire. Mm -hmm. Now, I know for me, because I was one of those men who went to my cave, one of those men who found it very difficult to cry. I mm. had an experience when mm. I was a child where I, my father was spanking me and I said, I'm not going to cry. I will not mm. give you the satisfaction of seeing me mm. cry. But that shut down my emotions. Yes. And so it, it wasn't just 
the male, female, different styles. But how do you get men like me, who I was mm -hmm. till recently, um, to to open up, to deal with the fear of opening up, the fear of expressing, the fear of being vulnerable? Mm -hmm. Well, for any of us uh, to you know get in touch with our fear, sadness, mm -hmm. anger, those you know dark emotions <laughs> we don't we don't like to accept. It's that basically we need to feel safe at first mm -hmm. and so creating safety is an important part of being in a relationship so that we feel we can open up to our partner and we will be held in this loving space and a lot of the work we are doing in relationships is learning that we can be vulnerable and it's safe <laughs> so allowing ourselves to be sort of naked uh, with our soul sharing from the depth of us and I think this is the gift of relating as it really gives us the ground to go deeper to ourselves first mm -hmm. <laughs> because wherever we lost ourselves we were not listening to how we feel and we were putting on a mask <laughs> um, being in a relationship it shows directly <laughs> so the gift of our partner is that we are learning how to be truly ourselves and sharing from the bottom of our hearts. Mm -hmm. I would imagine people are attracted to each other because they feel that person could be that safe space. Mm -hmm. But then the, the dynamics of not being educated about it get in the way and then mm -hmm. they end up with you. Yeah, hopefully. yeah. Well, you know, there is a theory that we tend to choose a partner who will make us feel similar how we felt at home with our parents when we were young and I think this is true for many of us that you know the way we grew up even though it may have been painful or sad or dramatic it feels like home like this is home this is love <laughs> this is what I'm familiar with and then we tend to create a relationship to escape what was at home but uh, if we don't work with it consciously, we have the tendency to recreate mm -hmm. how we felt at home. So we are asking for love and we are never getting what we really want. So at the end, we really need to, you know, just be with ourselves and be honest about how we are and also creating this intimacy in us. I think this is one of the mistakes that sometimes we want to improve the relationship, which means we want to improve the other partner. <laughs> right. Life would be good if it, this relationship would work if it weren't for you. <laughs> yeah, so if he is like this or right. if she is this way, everything will be fine. Mm -hmm. But at the end, we, we need to take the responsibility for being happy. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this is a personal journey. Now, do you work with individuals as well as couples? Because it seems like mm -hmm. whether you're in a relationship currently or not, the same issue exists inside mm. of you that keeps you from being able to form those kind of relationships. Yeah, I, I do both. I also have many workshops and trainings for both men and women who are single, or I also have just women's workshops. <laughs> and uh, in those workshops, I work a lot with, you know, feeling your body and feeling your emotion and this may be like a phrase like you know what is it to be in my body <laughs> and we just don't know because we have thoughts or we think oh it's natural we we are in our body how you know how could it be in a different way but i heard so many people say after they went through usually it's also like physical exercises feeling your body touching your body breathing and I heard so many people say, now I know, you know, what it is to be myself. Now I know what it is to be embodied. And I think this is something which is missing for so many of us, because as we are growing up, we are taught how to think and how to be logical and how to be goal oriented and have results. And we just may tend to really suppress this side of us which is about feeling and intuition and also just being instead of doing and achieving right. <laughs> and this is uh, these are important values of our society so many of us 
we may also get lost in this, you know, overachieving <laughs> direction. So, if you had one more underlying message of what you want to share with people, what would that be? One important thing I would like to share that no matter where we are in our life, we can change how we live and how we feel. And I know that there are so many people out there living a life they don't enjoy living. They may feel frustrated, alienated, tired, disconnected. And it doesn't have to be this way forever. We can change how we feel in our lives and we can consciously create the life we want to live. <laughs> and this is so important. I will maybe, when I think about myself being a young girl, I told you for a few years, I just didn't know where to go, like what will be the next step in my life and how do I live a meaningful life? I had no answers. I just felt the life I'm preparing for is not something I would like to live. And, you know, gradually I, I learned that I can feel very satisfied living my life and this is one of my messages. I am really showing people and teaching them practically how they can change the way they feel and the way they live. And the second very important thing is for people who are in a relationship and who may be struggling, that it's really worth learning, oftentimes through the struggles, through the conflict which is there, that in most cases, it's not all of the cases, but in most cases a conflict or not feeling happy <laughs> is not a sign to leave. <laughs> it's an opportunity to learn and grow together. And even, I, I just met so many people who really felt lost and they thought there is no way out of this pain they are living in, a relationship and mostly there is. <laughs> so if both of the partners want, they can create a relationship which is happy, which is full of love, which is full of passion. And it's really important to do so, especially when kids are involved, because then it's not just about are we feeling good together, but we are creating more than the romance. Yeah, you're 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 saving your family, yes. which is critical. I had to recently look. I've, I'm in my third marriage, and uh, first two marriages, I wasn't fully there. I realized mm. that. I mean, just recently, I was in a workshop where I really got that the intimacy problem was me, mm. <laughs> and, and so wow. I, I I like that phrase of into me I see. It's, mm. it's intimacy, and once I did that and became vulnerable with my true feelings, mm. everything changed. Yeah. Everything changed. So I would just say to everyone watching this, if you're not happy, if you're not experiencing joy and bliss and love in your relationship and seeing it as a, as a path to growth and wholeness in your life, um, this woman can help you. And so take advantage of that. I, I love what you're doing. I think it's sacred work and it's so important and it's such, our schools do not teach this work. True. And we are as someone said, the longest journey you'll ever take is 15 inches from your head to your heart. Mm. And once you get there, it's so worth it. So uh, thank you for doing the awesome work you're doing. It's wonderful. I'm just so thrilled that you're out there doing that work. Tell our viewers how they can get in touch with you so they can take advantage of the work you do. I think the best way to get touch in me is go to my website, denisapalachkova.cz. Uh, you can see it's written down. <laughs> and there I have inspiration in form of articles, videos, there is downloadable things. So that's the best step how to, you know, learn more about what I have to offer. And also people can contact me directly if they would like to have a talk or create a workshop together. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Well, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you for having me. I also appreciate it. Well, thank you for joining us as well. And uh, we'll be back next week with another talking about success. I hope today that you've gained something uh, of value for you so that you can live a life of greater success, greater happiness, and greater fulfillment. So until next time, take care.